Howdy, howdy, my creative friends. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Studio Time. I'm in the studio today and I've taken out uh, a Jane Davenport paper insert. So I've decided also to use some of, of my Delusions shimmer sprays to create my background. These are really pretty metallic sprays. They just have a really beautiful um, sheen and shimmer, as the name suggests <laughs> to them. So. And uh, let's pick some colors. That's the hard part, isn't it? Just to decide what colors to go for. Um, I'm thinking maybe some of this London blue, some pure sunshine. Let's start with those and then we'll see how we go. So you always have to shake those really, really hard because of the little um, ball bearing inside, which is what is going to help you mix the particles of shimmer into that liquid. So if you have a bottle you haven't used in a while, you'll see here, let's try to get in shot, all the metallic here is just dropped down to the bottom and then you've got the clear liquid sort of on top. So that's why you have to make sure you shake them really well. Let's do that and drop it on the floor at the same time. <laughs> okay, this should be good. So if you look at the bottom, you should not see anything stuck um, right there so we're good to go let's start with the blue just random spray bit of the yellow and then let's just roll that off to see what colors we actually have here um, maybe a little pink I guess it's always a good idea to put pink, right? <laughs> no, actually I'm going to keep the theme of yellows and greens and blues. Um, uh, I think we're going to add a bit of cut grass. Shake it, baby, shake it. Let's see what we get. Yeah, a bit down at the bottom here. And then maybe a little bit more with some fresh lime. Fresh lime, if that one isn't jammed, which it might be. Yeah, it's just sprayed on me, so that's good. <laughs> Saturate it with this one. It's so pretty. Just give it just a second to soak in. And then wipe yourself off if you've sprayed yourself like I just have. <laughs> Never look at your spray in the face when it's clogged because you know what's going to happen. <laughs> All right, let's just mop that up. Ah, oh, so pretty. Now, I don't know if you can see that shimmer, but surely that you cannot, you know, mistake for anything else but beautiful shimmer. So pretty. I'm going to put that aside, clean up my surface in the meantime. Just give it a moment to dry. I'll be right back. Okay, so this is pretty much dry, so I can move on to the next step, which uh, is going to be some texture with modeling paste. So I've chosen a couple of stencils, um, both are from the Crafters Workshop. This is Doodle Bloom and this is Coronet Wreath, or Wreath, I'm not sure. <laughs> Wreath, I think. <laughs> um, and if you're wondering... Um, how I, I store my stamps or why they look like that it's because I remove all the packaging of all my stamps and stencils and I store them in these little uh, plastic sleeves they and then I store these vertically in a basket so I can just flip through them really easily and put them back um, easily in their pocket when I'm done with them so uh, it's these plastic sleeves are from I'll show you the packet from Avery L um, and they're called stamp and die storage. They basically have three sizes. This is the medium size and you can see it's not quite the same size here But uh, what I do is I cut off the excess of the sleeve So I have as little stuff hanging over as possible and it's much easier when everything all my uh, six by six inches stencils are all the same size and they all fit nicely together So that's why I just really make it work for me um, So yeah that and then we're gonna need some modeling paste. I use Use Liquitex um, I think that's the best brand and to apply that 
My favorite tool these days is this Finebear silicone brush. I went into detail um, about it a couple of videos ago, so you can always watch that, but it's just the best thing to apply. Modeling paste, gel medium, and gesso, any kind of medium. That's really cool. So let's just put this out and add a little texture. So when you add modeling paste, white modeling paste over inks, like the dilution ink sprays um, and I would assume the shimmer I'm not sure about the shimmer as much but definitely over the inks the white of the modeling paste is going to absorb the color of the ink and it gives you those beautiful shades of color so it won't stay completely white now I haven't like I said I haven't really tried it with the shimmer sprays but let's find out what happens we'll see what it'll look like so let's just put a little bit in here you can see how this applies super easily it's so much easier than with a palette knife, which is what I normally use. I'm just taking it out straight out of the pot. And I'm just not, I'm not going to cover the whole thing. I just want a sample of that um, stencil, just a, an area of it. And you've got the most beautiful detail. Oh my God, it's so, I've just died and gone to heaven. I look so beautiful. Like it couldn't get any more perfect than this, if I do say so myself. <laughs> but it's not thanks to my technique, it's just this tool and the beautiful design. Um, this design was done, I can't remember the name of it, of the um, artist. This one is Art by Marlene. Um, she does have some delicious um, designs for us. I'm going to try to get this one across here. This could uh, backfire, but we'll see. Now, let's just do the same. This texture paste has got some really nice, um, I don't know, what do you call it? It's like a heavy body paint, I suppose. It's nice and thick and it's not liquid. It doesn't just run through the stencil and give you a crappy result. It actually looks really beautiful. I'm going to try some of the, to get those little scallop edges here a bit. Anything that sticks out that I don't want, I can always remove after with a baby wipe. I'm not trying to get it too perfect, but just I just want the design to go over a bit more here. So you can see that, yes, the uh, the texture base is starting to absorb some of the colors below. See how I started with all white here, and it's mostly white here, but you can see that it's starting to absorb some of the green there. So let's see what happens. I'm just going to wipe my table once again, just so I don't put stuff all over. Actually, I was pretty good this time and it wasn't too messy. Um, nothing I want to remove while it's still dry. So what I'm going to do now is just pause the video, let this dry. I'm going to speed it up a little bit with my heat gun and then I'll go clean my stencils because you don't want any modeling paste drying on them. That would probably make it much harder to clean later on. So I'm going to let this dry and then when I come back, I won't move the this page. We'll see how much is changed. So stay tuned. Okay, I said I wouldn't move my page, but I did move it while I was drying it. But anyway, so this is what it looks like now. As you can see, the modeling paste definitely has absorbed some of the color, not saturated. And the reason why I wasn't sure it was going to work as much as the Dilution ink sprays is because of the shimmer in it. So I was thinking the shimmer may stop the ink from absorbing a little bit, but I knew it would, you know, still happen. So what you get is basically a beautiful soft effect and that texture is still definitely visible. So it looks just beautiful. I don't really want to touch it much anymore because it's so pretty as it is. Um, but what I was thinking is to keep it quite light uh, because it is quite delicate and shimmery right now. So I've got the piece of deli paper where I have a bit of leftover paint. Um, I was thinking maybe I could just cut out some of these colors and then just um, collage them onto my page. So I'm going to use my handy dandy tool again. Um, some matte gel medium. And then do the same pretty much I did with my modeling paste. Uh, except that I'm going to tear off pieces of this deli paper, get the colorful areas, some of them, we'll see how we go. I'm trying to cover all of the beautiful 
um, shimmery background but maybe just you know a couple of bits like that just a bit of texture happening yeah let's do that we won't know until we've done it so let's just go for it and I make sure that I go over the center of my page here it's not ideal when you have staples in the center obviously but it just if you just put them on either side it just makes you feel your your page a little bit disconnected you know it's not a spread a uniform spread um, if you've got bits on either side but if you do have something going across both then um, it feels a bit better now I'm picking up my gel medium is picking up some of that color, which was actually Dilution ink sprays on the deli paper. So that's why it's running a little bit. But I think I've got some of it off there. That's all right. No big deal. Just make sure you press your deli paper quite nice there because you've got the texture with the modeling paste underneath. So I may not want to stick without, you know, a little bit of a bit of help basically so that's it it's added a little bit of color that's all I wanted to do so I'm going to dry that and then have a little think of what I'm going to do next all right I'm back I gotta be distracted <laughs> with a few orders to pack for the store um, and uh, by the way all the supplies that I use in my videos you can get at the mixed media store so the address is mixedmediastore.com.au easy so just to add a bit more uh, fun and texture and um, metallic effects to my page and to unify all my elements I'm going to add some splatters across the page so I've chosen a couple of colors that uh, are complementary to what I'm going for at the moment so light blue which matches this one and then a greeny color so this is called waterfall green and this one's called sun up blue they're both metallic acrylic inks so they're just like a if you've never used them they imagine it's a super liquid acrylic paint that's the best way I can describe them um, except that you don't have to dilute the paint because it's already done for you in the correct way correct ratio and all of that so they come with a little eyedropper but I'm going to just put a little bit here on in a little pot um, and then dip my fan brush in there and then just tap it oop now nah, got a bit excited here well I didn't want such a big blob not this big that's okay it's fine the baby wipe while it's still kind of wet, you know, you can usually remove most things. And so basically what I'm going to do is just tap, 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 tap. Just throughout. I love using my little fan brush here for splatters. It works really well. I used to use it for um, oil painting mostly, but I haven't done that in a while. So I'd really like to get back to oil painting as well someday okay I'm going to switch colors um, and use some of the blue now just because I don't like wasting my supplies I just poured back whatever I had left over into the jar and then now I'm going to just add a little bit of this blue you don't need much at all so there's no point in wasting any excess a couple more not too much we don't want to overdo it and then I'm going to clean that up, dry it off, and be right back. Okay, I think my little uh, splatter is mostly dry. I'm going to go with a thick Sharpie paint, paint marker. I can't speak today. Paint marker, and then just add... Ooh, I should shake it up a bit more than that. Prime it a bit more, just to make sure it's white um, around there. But what is going to happen is that it's also going to absorb the color underneath. So you'll get um, some more controlled marks, but also that will be a little bit more subtle. Now, if I go over um, the deli paper, then I should be fine. These dots should stay white because there is a barrier between the Dilution ink sprays at the bottom um, and the deli paper. So we should be fine here. But I'm still adding some 
on the background just because it adds um, just a little something that's not visible but you know it's all in the detail basically and then I might go over some of my white dots just to make them a bit more obvious I want some subtlety but not you know, the whole thing completely subtle. <laughs> but actually now I remember that I used Delusion X sprays on my deli paper. So silly me, the same thing is going to happen. They're not going to stay very white. But anyway, I just remembered. That's okay. No worries at all. Whatever happens, happen, you know. Just go with the flow. There's no point stressing about things. Um, art is kind of hard to control most of the time. So we just have to, you know, just go with it. Feel the flow. Go with the flow. All right. Let's give it a little quick blast. Obviously, there's many things we could do here. We could add more collage paper, more doodles, more paint. But you know, I kind of like what I'm looking at now, so I don't want to, I don't want to lose the effect and overdo it. Um, only thing I would like to do that is not going to cover too much of my beautiful texture and colors is to add a little bit of um, of acrylic paint with my finger. So a bit of finger painting. Let's see what color we should go for. I'm thinking white because we haven't used um we have a, we can't really see a lot of white in there. And actually I have a new one here. It's iridescent white, so even better because I'll have it a bit of metallic and white at the same time. So let's just do a few dots. Just, you know, again subtle still in keeping with the rest of the page. It's not uh, a bright white because it's iridescent, but it still gets the effect I'm trying to go for. So I'm just really just dabbing my finger. I'm not trying to make perfect circles, just adding a little bit of texture. That's all. I'm going to add a few also on um, the 3D texture paste here just so it all comes together and it kind of looks like it's it's snowing on the page look like little snowflakes falling down <laughs> kind of nice and then maybe one more here all right that's it <laughs> it's easy to overdo it let me show you what i'm doing here see the little snowflakes how pretty that is Oh, I'm just, um, I just remembered, I didn't actually explain what these were called. This is the FW Pearlescent Liquid Acrylic. That's from Dale Rowney. So if you haven't tried it, it's, they're really awesome to play with. Very fluid if you want to, you know, cover your surface very quickly, uh, but also perfect for little details. Anyway, so I thought I'd just add that in. And this one is Liquitex Basics, Iridescent White. It's really nice. It's like a, what would you call it? It's like a white silver, <laughs> like a pearl, I suppose, <laughs> a pearl white with some iridescent in it. All right. Um, okay. I'm just going to dry that off and then think about what I'm going to do. But I feel like we're close to the end of the page because like I said, I want to keep it subtle and light and not lose this beautiful effect that I've got here. So I was debating between doing a thin border with the iridescent white once again or to go with something darker to make things pop a little bit. So um, I'm going to try with the white first and if that's not to my liking then I'll go over with the dark um, afterwards. Easier going with white then black then black and then white. <laughs> so all I'm doing is just putting a little bit on, of paint on my finger and I'm just going to rub the edges to create a sort of an even, an even border. Again, quite subtle. So if it's too subtle, we can always change it after. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking maybe 
I could go with an iridescent color instead of a black or a white. One that picks up the colors on the page here. I'll do this one anyway because even if I do two different colors it will still be quite interesting. So as you can see it's nothing difficult at all. I'm just enjoying my time in the studio and painting with my fingers and <clears throat> taking a bit of time for myself in between packing orders <laughs> but I love doing that too it's good it's all good okay so we've got like a thin border so it's quite light I think I'm going to try adding a little bit of color no, I think it needs a little bit of a je ne sais quoi. So, I'm thinking... I am thinking. Let's see what I've got at hand here. Um, I may add some of the... This one. So, this is the Pabio Studio um, Iridescent Green Blue. It's got two tones in it. It's beautiful and really metallic. I'm just going to add a little bit. Oops. So same thing that I've just done, just a thin border with my finger. I'm not even going to go over all of my white. I don't want to lose all of it. So I'm just going to add the blue just in sections. Make it a little bit messy looking. But it's still metallic, so it's all nice and pretty. <laughs> Just like that. Just a little bit more. Okay, have a look. So a little bit more color on the edges, but still subtle, like it's not really too strong, so it's good. Okay, gonna dry this off and I'll be back. So to finalize this um, original spread, while I was drying, I was thinking I could just add, um, just write, go with the flow. Just as a reminder of, you know, going with the flow and not overstressing and overdoing things. Just keep things simple. Um, so I thought I could stamp it because my handwriting is not great. But... If you think about it, if you stamp it, it's going to be very rigid, straight edges, letters. Um, it's not going to be very fluid and flowing and not really going to uh, match the style of the art spread here, the original spread. So I thought I'll just go with the flow and actually hand write it. <laughs> and also I'm going to put it in this section here, which is not a corner I usually use. But this is what I've got, so we'll go with it. Um, I'm just going to go really simple. And I've used, or oh, I'm using a very, uh, very fine tip here on purpose because I don't want to make it too obvious. It's just like a little secret message for myself. Oops. I think this pen may be on its way out. Yeah, I think it's on its way out. Let me go find another one. <laughs> Typical, isn't it? Okay, let's try this one. So I was working at first with um, the Uniball Signo Angelic White. Extra fine tip. This one's a tiny bit thicker, but still fine enough for what I want to do. This is the Uniball Signo Broad White. So I'm just going to go over this, but uh, I'm having problem with pens today. Ah, oh, here you go. It's just, you know, having a moment. Making it harder for me. Well, I was going to try to make it, you know, a bit of a secret message. And I think it will be that way. Only I will be able to see it. <laughs> it's a new pen, so I haven't really primed it enough. OK, 
Okay. That is all I want to do. Um, and then the white may pick up some of the colors from below, making it a bit more subtle. We'll see how it looks. But for now, this is the finished uh, page in all its glory and texture. This is so nice. It's just so nice to feel as well. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, that you had a lot of fun and you've you know, feeling inspired to try some of the techniques, maybe color combinations and supplies yourself. If you've enjoyed it, then make sure to give me a thumbs up. It's really important. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you're watching me on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching me on my website, then leave me a comment to say hi and let me know what you think of this. Thanks very much. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.